Well, we did it, ladies and gentlemen. We finally made it the year of the Linux desktop, and I'm going to prove it to you why it is here, and it is now. So we're going to talk about why I think that, maybe not in the traditional sense, but in a strange and unusual way, the year of the Linux desktop is actually kind of here. We've been saying it for years, but now it really feels real. One is the most obvious, and that's Windows 10 has the Windows subsystem for Linux. Now, I haven't had much hands-on time with this because I don't really have access to a Windows machine right now. Uh, my girlfriend's Windows machine is over there, but that's her machine. I ain't gonna fuck with it. As I understand it, Win32 kernel has a full compatibility layer with the Linux kernel. It handles the um, instructions sent by Linux packages as if it was actually Linux, even though it's not actually Linux. It's just a subsystem. It's, it's all the pieces around the kernel. That's why it's called the Windows subsystem for Linux. But here we are, we have Linux subsystem on Windows and a lot of people really like it and a lot of people are developing on it and that's amazing. Number two, Linux apps. This is an article from Android Police, but Linux apps on Chrome OS. Now we've known about this for a while, but this goes a bit deeper. For anyone who's used it, these applications are, are designed to look and feel very native. Uh, you can install dev files and flat pack and all your applications you normally like right on there. Look at that, they have, you have Caden Live. Think about that, you have a Chromebook. Not only do you have access to all of the Android apps, but you have access to almost any Linux application. Which, by the way, that also means Steam, -o Steam for playing video games. Visual Studio Code. I'm 80% sure that means eventually things like DaVinci Resolve if you want. So you'll have access to all that. Very interesting use case, providing you're the kind of person who can give a little trust to Google. I'm not sure if I'm ready to go there, but interesting nonetheless. There's a whole there's a whole development on this Crostini, I think is what it's officially called, and a lot of Chromebooks support it. And I didn't have it loaded up here, but I want to talk about one of my favorite. So your Android phone your Android phone has a Linux kernel in it, but it doesn't have the user space, and that's where Termux comes in. You gives you a, a damn good command line interface with most of the tools that most nerds are gonna need. So think about this. You have it you have it on Windows, you have it on Chrome OS, two desktop operating system right there. And for anything running F Droid or the Play Store, you can grab Termux and have it a good Linux environment directly on your devices. Where is Linux not? Well, to my knowledge, Linux is not quite on Mac OS and iOS. I don't really see that changing much anytime soon. I would love to be delightfully wrong about that, but as it looks right now, nothing permanent. I can honestly say, as it comes to the desktop, Linux is on every platform. Every platform that has a, ter a command line interface has the ability to run command line Linux applications and that's absolutely amazing. And I'm saying it now, 20, 2018 slash 2019, year of the Linux desktop, but just not the way we thought it was gonna be. <laughs> okay, so those are my two cents. Let me know what you think. If you think I'm wrong, fight me. If you think I'm right, fight me. Either way, let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you on the next ones. Peace.